Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I would like to welcome you to this uh, to this educational webinar about spectral flow cytometry. We will wait a couple of minutes more uh, to let everyone join. And uh, for the moment, I would like to inform you that, of course, well, I will be happy to receive your question. Please, uh, also during the conference or by the end of the webinar, just type in your questions, your your comments in the chat box and uh, we will make some kind of brief uh, um, summary. I will try to answer as much as possible by during the call and by the end of the conference. Yeah, I would like to thank also our local representative, uh, Chaba Banco, for uh, our helping me in organizing this, uh, this call. So I'm really happy to, uh, to do this, let's say, uh, purely Hungarian uh, scientist-oriented um, conference. And uh, as I said, I will give it just a couple of minutes more to let everyone access in the webinar and then we are getting started. Okay, so once again, good afternoon, everyone. Let's get started. Uh, let me shortly introduce also myself. As I said, I'm an application specialist for flow cytometry at Axela, and uh, today I'm going to give you um, a quite extensive presentation about the spectral technology mainly, and then we will make some conclusion uh, with the last part about um, sorting. So the idea is to present you mainly, in fact, the Cytec Aurora, which is a full spectrum flow cytometry and the newly built Cytec Aurora cell sorter, which it's a uh, really new and exciting technology for us, uh, which is a cell sorting based on the successfully previously launched um, Cytec spectral cytometry. So let's give you a brief introduction of why we need such a breakthrough technology in terms of um, needs from the flow cytometrist. As you can see here, starting from the 80s, there was a requirement of just one laser, two colors, while today we are having really higher um, requests from users from, from flow cytometry, which they are uh, requiring a large amount of channels as well as several laser because the application, especially for immunologists, immunophenotyping, are going more in deep with the number of marker, number of antibodies that you need to separate at the same time in your analysis. And the challenging uh, point for the conventional flow cytometer is to be able to separate so many dyes which they have close emission due to their properties. So how do we overcome this problem? Uh, 
in fact, the problem could be overcome using this innovative spectral technology. You can see here an overview of the conventional optics. So as you well know, the sample is injected using hydrodynamic focusing, single stream of cells, it's created, and the interrogation point where the laser is scattering your cells. So as I mentioned, what is the problem here is that usually each fluorochrome is associated to one detector. So you can imagine that if you want to reach the nowadays requirements of 20 to 50 uh, colors, for example, immunophenotyping, you will need an enormous amount of detectors as well as your filters, your conventional bandwidth filter are way too large to be able to separate highly overlapping dyes. What we have developed with SciTech is a totally innovative type of technology. At first, you can see one example of our violet module. So our violet module, it's basically semiconductor array detector composed by several avalanche photodiode. And one thing that you might notice immediately is the size of the bandwidth. So the size of the emission filter is totally uh, different compared to, to conventional flow cytometry. We speak about 15 to 35 nanometer uh, for each of these emission channels, which allows you to work with, first of all, 16 color just coming from the violet emission, as you can see here, as well as the possibility to separate highly overlapping dyes. And I make some schematic representation of how it looks like our detector. So our detector is composed by several small avalanche photodiode. The light incoming comes from the fiber optic and then it's split across several detectors. So this is the concept of the innovative uh, spectral technology, which replaced this large type of filters with really small bandwidth and very sensitive small avalanche photodiode compared to the classical larger photomultipliers. What are we going to use here? We are not using a dispersive optics, but we are using something called wavelength division multiplexing, which basically use the property of a single fiber optic to combine multiple laser, multiple wavelength coming from multiple laser into a single strand on fiber. So the multiplexing phase, and the demultiplexing, which basically split the signal of this different wavelength into the corresponding detector. Uh, I like to show the example of the telecommunication to explain for, let's say, users which are new to this technology. You can imagine that these are your, your lasers. This is your single strand of fiber, the light traveled through the fiber, and then is demultiplexed across the several detector depending by the wavelength of interest. So this is basically the concept of this technology, yeah? And you can imagine that here it's your fiber optic incoming with different wavelengths and then the, the respective wavelength is split across different detectors depending by the module, whether it's violet module, blue, yellow, green, UV, depending by the lasers of interest. Here you can see a schematic representation of our three laser instrument. The lasers are specially separated. So up to the interrogation point, it looks quite similar to conventional flow, uh, but the innovative part comes at the emission point when the light is multiplex into the fiber optic and demultiplex into the detector module. As each of these boxes, which you see here, detector module, it's composed by several avalanche photodiode, yeah? So basically this is the concept of this uh, technology. The light is incoming. There are different lenses which are splitting across the avalanche photodiode of interest. In this way, we are able to create such a incredible performance for a three laser instrument. You can see here 16 channels for the violet module 14 channels for the blue and eight channels for the red for a total of 38 fluorescent channels. And if you may notice for all of these fluorescent channels, we have really, really tight bandwidth. So emission filter size, which is varying from 15 till 35 nanometer, which is four to five times smaller than a conventional cytometer. <laughs> There are different options how to apply this technology. 
Northern Lights is the smaller brother, let's say, which in my opinion, it's already really high performance instrument. So three laser up to 38 fluorescent channels, 41 parameters, because we can create two side scatter at the same time. So one side scatter comes from the blue, one side scatter from the violet, plus one forward scatter for a total of 41 parameters. And this is a system which recently acquired the CIVD certificate. So it's also fully ready for clinical use. And the bigger brother, so-called Aurora, it's going from three up to five laser. It's a more research-oriented uh, instrument, uh, which in fact can go up to 67 parameter uh, because we have 64 fluorescent channels plus two side scatter, one forward scatter. And here you can see that the difference stays, of course, in the number of lasers that you can have. Uh, here you can have blue, red, violet, so more, more classical configuration. While here for more specific requirements, we can also add the yellow and UV lasers. Both instruments are having same performances, so up to 35,000 events per second, really high digital signal, 4 million channels, for each parameter, you can generate a really large FCS file. And this 200 nanometer detection in size, it's uh, practically not valid anymore. We can actually detect much smaller particles close to 90 to 100 nanometer, as I will show you in a later point. So as you might notice, this is a really compact instrument. So there is no secret in here. This is the optic, how it looks like inside. You can see the four laser configuration. The light is traveling through this mirror to the excitation path, to the flow cell, and then it's received by the fiber optic, which lets the light travel until the emission point. So this black box here, which you can see is the emission path, can detect, can collect up to 64 fluorescent channel composed by five module, for example, with five laser, as I was showing you in the previous slides. And the innovation comes from the fact that we are using really, of course, tight and compact uh, uh, ADP, avalanche photodiode, APD, sorry, uh, compared to the conventional classical PNTs. For example, this is a trigon with about three colors detection, which of course um, takes bigger space and has different performances. So the technology is, well, is evolving and we are able to have in such a small space, 64 fluorescent channels versus three colors in here. That's why we are able to have such a compact instrument, which nowadays it's also an important factor. Uh, I know that many times I visit user scientists, they always are having some, some, uh, some question about the space, where to position the instrument. So we are able to help also from this point of view because uh, the system is quite compact compared to the conventional cytometer, which must have several detectors, several filters to reach similar or lower amount of colors. And this is the classical example of the size of the APDs compared to the conventional photomultipliers. And once again, schematical representation of one detector module, how the light is split across the several channels. So practically speaking, what is also the idea of having a spectral cytometry? It's, as I mentioned, the flexibility in uh, using several type of redundant antibodies, redundant uh, uh, fluorochromes, which has close emission wavelength and cannot be simply separated using conventional filter. I take the classical example of GFP and FITS which they have quite similar uh, emission. If I would try to put this in a classical 520 plus minus 40 band pass filter, uh, simply the system will tell me that this is a one color because it's not electronically, optically able to separate these two channels. And on the other hand, also the number of laser, now we are at seven laser instrument, very high performance, but we cannot uh, I mean, higher is the num number of laser, higher is also the cost, the complexity, and uh, the maintenance cost, of course, about the machine. Uh, so that's why we have decided to keep, for example, with the five laser instrument to improve the detection path, rather there increase the number of laser to seven. Yeah. And we believe that definitely this is the direction where the spectral flow cytometry is going. 
so uh, basically our technology, it's already the future, is not a matter of if conventional cytometry will replace, will be replaced by spectral, but when this will happen. So it's a process that it's already uh, ongoing, and we believe that in uh, upcoming years, will other company will take over this direction as well. Let's see one example of output. So you are used to see your classical figurative emission in a different way. You are used to see, for example, a single histogram or a scatter plot. As I mentioned here, we are doing full spectrum acquisition. Uh, this is one example of violet detector, as you remember, with the different channels. So 16 channel violet, 14 channel blue, eight channels for red. And this spectral plot is basically representing uh, the intensity expressing logarithmic scale as you do in your conventional cytometer. So we have up to seven log range, quite wide range to accommodate uh, enough space for weak and very bright fluorochrome. This is our, in fact, channels on the x-axis, 38 fluorescent channel with three lasers only. And this is, of course, the heat map, which express the uniformity, the density of the signal and the intensity, as you can see here. So the idea is that um, we are detecting the PE in a slightly different way compared to the conventional cytometer. So you can see here that we are not detecting only, for example, this portion of light, which is coming from before, but we are detecting more photons. So more photons are resulting in, in a higher resolution. Okay, so we try to utilize more signal compared to the conventional cytometer. And we want to get more information in connection to the amount of photons collected. How do I read the spectral signature? So the spectral signature, it's basically the so-called fingerprint of each fluorochrome. So each fluorochrome has its unique uh, spectral signature. And this is also helping user using the spectral signature to actually identify whether there is some cross-contamination, whether what you are watching is actually, it's actually ficoritrine or it's something else. And here you can see an interpretation of how to read the spectral signature. So this is the uh, trend of the signature. And each of these small uh, density plot represents the count of the object, in fact. So it's like reading in several histograms together. The count of the object and the MFI, basically. Yeah, and here you see the overall intensity expressed now in percentage, but it can be expressed also in logarithmic scale. So it depends how the user wish to, to express this. <clears throat> Compared to the conventional cytometry, we apply something called spectral mixing. So the spectral mixing, it's a process which in this case, assign the photons to the right channel. There is no practical difference compared to the compensation because the results will be anyways a correction of the signal, but it's a more accurate algorithm compared to the compensation. So the spectral mixing in this case for the PE, uh, as you can see, the PE has actually a quite interesting spectrum. There is some emission in the violet 8, violet 9. There is a brightest point in the B5. And this is the best fitting channel which the algorithm is using for the unmixing. What does mean best fitting channel? So I give you the example of what is behind the spectral mixing. It's coming from the linear mixing from mathematic. Uh, so it's not anything new which we invented. It's validated from tenths of year. You can imagine that these are your fluorescent channels. In this case, up to 38 holes. The peg, it's your fluorochrome and the algorithm should find the best fitting point. In theory, these can fit in many holes, but which is the best fitting point? So this is what your algorithm is basically able to do. And as you can see here in the violet channel, we have some emission. So potentially we could also consider this as emission point, but the best fitting channel is the B5, which is actually utilized by our unmixing algorithm to assign the photons to our right channels. What is the difference if I would compare compensation and unmixing? As I mentioned, the practical aspects are quite similar, but the unmixing, it's using a more accurate matrix. 
because it's calculated on the 64 fluorescent channel if I consider the five laser instrument. Uh, while the conventional cytometer, it's usually a one-to-one -one correlation, which is basically considering to assign one photon to one detector, sorry, one fluorochrome to one detector, while here we are looking for the best fitting channel across 64 data points. So mathematically, we have more accuracy. It's more precise, more robust algorithm, but the practical aspects for the user are exactly the same because the user is going to anyways use the unstained, single color controls, and then apply the live mixing instead of applying the compensation. Here you can see how the algorithm is actually working. So this is, for example, a two color experiment with FITC only, P only. Uh, then we run our mix, which contains both fluorochromes. The algorithm is basically putting those spectrum, which are from logarithmic into linear scale and comparing the different spectral plot and generating something which is called similarity index. And based on the similarity and the complexity is giving us the output, whether these are possible to be separated, how much similar are, and um, how the results will look like if we try to separate these fluorochromes. Talking about the spectral plot, once again, I would like to remark, uh, I would like to explain um, what we see in the spectral plot. So when we apply the algorithm, we normalize into linear scale the uh, spectral signature, while when we observe it after acquisition, we see the logarithmic scale. This is the main difference of this, um, of this pre and post processing of the data. One nice example which we ran in Warsaw at Nansky Institute was to try FITC and GFP together. So this is quite nice practical example for you. These are the single color of FITC and GFP. And as you remember, when we try to run this in a conventional cytometer, they are hardly possible to be separated because the filter size is too large. So there is no possibility optically to separate these two colors. But using this site spectral technology, having so small bandwidth, about 15 to 20 nanometer, we are able to say that GFP has the best emission peak in B1, FITC has the best emission peak in B2, and then we go into the normalization, as you remember, so we switch from logarithmic to linear scale. The algorithm is overlapping these two fluorochrome, these two uh, spectral signatures and generating something called similarity matrix. So the similarity matrix could be comparable to your spillover matrix. As you can see here, fits it into GFP, it's 94% similar, very similar. But for our technology, this is something quite easy to do. You can see complexity index about five. So we are anyways able to separate this until you don't see something like 99%, 98, 99%. So we recommend like to keep some similarity not higher than 98 to 99% because uh, not because the system cannot separate, but because the quality of separation cannot be satisfactory enough, especially for complex panels. And that's the practical example of results. So you can see quite nicely resolved population of GFP single positive, FITC single positive on spleen samples. One thing I didn't speak about, it's quite technical information, but it's very important because I mentioned that the APDs, the photodiode that we are using are small, but also very sensitive. You can see here the uh, basically equivalent solubile fluorochrome. These are a uh, value, technical value, which are used to evaluate the fluorescence sensitivity of a flow cytometer using beads. Probably you are familiar with this value. This MEFL is corresponding to MESF. It's the same, it's just different interpretations. So you can see how low are this value and how high quality is our fluorescent sensitivity. Okay, what about the speed of acquisition? We spoke about the optics. The system can also help, can also help uh, the um, acquisition at fast rate keeping higher sensitivity. Uh, the idea is that in every flow cytometry classes, usually they recommend you keep the flow slow and you will get good output. 
This is absolutely true because of the conventional geometry of the laser when basically you are going to increase your uh, flow rate, you increase also the, the variability of the cells that are passing in front of laser. So not every cells will get the same pools uh, because of the classical geometry of the laser, which is exciting more the cells which are passing in the core of the core diameter and the cells that are passing on the left and right sides, for example, which are out of this Gaussian profile, they will not generate the same pools. But what about if we modify slightly the geometry of the laser applying this flat top correction? This is what the engineer at SciTech, they decided to do. So they actually apply some lenses system in front of laser to increase the exposition uh, surface and keep good intensity across larger surface. So if the cell number one is passing here, the cell number two is passing in here and cell number three in here, still all these three cells will generate the same pools and will have the same quality of detection. So the idea is that at higher flow rate, you might get some doublets, you might get some uh, larger amount of cells, not the classical string of, single stream of cells, but all these cells at different location will get the same uh, intensity. And you can see here an example, for example, at six to 8,000, uh, up to 35,000 events per second. This is the classical eight peaks beads, which we use to validate the performances of the machine. And visually you can see that those peaks are quite nicely resolved with low CV at high flow rate, same as at low flow rate. This is not only a technology which works well for standard cell-based assay. We have tested a major a variety of small particles acquisition as well, because the number of photons detected is higher. So the number of photons is directly proportional to the resolution. And uh, as you remember, I was showing you in the official technical specification 200 nanometer, but it's practically not true because we can see nicely here a population of 100 nanometer and even smaller I, we are very able to see. So you can see the example here of, of beads for validation of different type of beads. Also here, another nice population of 100 nanometer. And here we could nicely see even smaller before uh, the noise. And finally, after the test of inorganic particles, we can see some example also of viruses starting from 90 nanometer to 200. Uh, plasma extracellular vesicle going from 100 to 300 nanometers. So there is also a quite nice of use for this, uh, uh, this important application. And let's go into the spectral signatures. Um, so the spectral signatures, as I mentioned previously, are something like the fingerprint of our instrument. So each fluorochrome uh, shows different spectral signature. We have optimized uh, the spectral signature using our CD4 kit, so highly expressed marker to be able to adjust the intensity from very weak to, to very bright signal. And the idea is that the user has some nice manual where basically can find the combination of fluorocon that we have tested, how the spectral signature looks like according to the number of laser, of course, and which are the recommended combination to be used. So you can have some kind of initial input, initial starting point to be able to start working with this technology. I have to say that it's quite nice to have the overview of each fluorochrome, not only a single channel or a separate histogram, because I'm able to see also depending by the properties of cells, if there is some strange signal where I don't expect, it might be the autofluorescence, which is coming from the cell properties. And now let's go practically into some panel. So let's see what we have done with this instrument so far. As you remember, the blue laser module can go up to 14 fluorescent channels. So we have been able to generate with a one laser instrument, nine antibodies in one tube using a quite large amount of uh, overlapping dyes, as you can see here. <clears throat> and then we have added two more laser so three laser, and you can see these are the existing original antibodies. So we have increased the number of T monocytes um, existing nine color tube to uh, T, B, and K cells to generate such a nice 24 antibodies panel. This is a quite nice optimized panel, which is a bit like our gold standard for 
three lasers uh, customers which they want to start to increase their existing panel maybe they are at six to eight colors with the conventional cytometer and they want to increase the number of antibodies uh, this can be a nice let's say starting point that they can use to uh, because we have already validated this combination of fluorochromes we know that they work nicely uh, that uh, there is not too bad spillover and we can nicely separate. So you can see how many brilliant violet antibodies we have here in the violet channel, the classical APC alexafluor in the red. And then here also, there is also variety of tandem and other alexafluor for the, for the blue. All of these antibodies you can see put together, of course, is not, every plot is not very visible, but the, the purpose here is to show you how we are able to nicely separate all the subpopulation of lymphocytes, monocytes, and granulocytes. You can see here in the NKs, nicely separated CD8 positive, NKT cells, B cells, and so on. So this panel is basically composed by quite large amount of overlapping dyes. I try to put this on a standard spectra viewer for conventional cytometer, and I see quite a lot of uh, critical points starting from, for example, APC, Alexa floor 647, Alexa for 488, 532, E-Floor with super bright. So there are just few of the points which I couldn't do if using a conventional cytometer. And why this instrument, this three lasers instrument was getting so fast, the clinical certification, as I mentioned, the idea of having the spectral observation allows the user to really double check whether there is some cross-contamination in your data, yeah? So you can see here the example of the Alexa Floor 532. This is what we were expecting according to the manual, according to the validation. That's how it looks like, the signature of the Alexa Floor 532. And our clients send me this uh, asking for some help to make interpretation of why there is such a high background in the violet ray region where it's not expected for this fluorochrome. And we have been able using this full observation, the spectral viewer, to see that they were using some brilliant violet buffer, which was generating the uh, auto fluorescence here. And in fact, in the in the instruction of the brilliant violet buffer, that was specified to don't use with all the fluorochrome, but specifically with the brilliant violet series. So it was not proper for the Alexa Fluor 532. And using the spectral overview, we have been able to identify these anomalies in the data. We spoke about the three laser, but as I mentioned, the bigger brother Aurora is going up to five laser. So here the optical path is quite similar. There is an increase of the number of laser with addition of 561 and 355 and the number of detector that we have here. As you might notice for all the three and five laser instrument, we have two side scatter detector at the same time. So we don't need really to bother to exchange optical filters. This is another thing I really appreciate about spectral cytometry that uh, user don't have to really buy a long list of filters and mirror to be exchanged to increase the compatibility. All the channels are available at the same time. The two side scatter are available at the same time consecutively. And this can be nice in situation where you want to discriminate, for example, very small particles using the violet or for other cell type, you might like to use more the 488 nanometer laser, depending by the refractive index of the cell type. And that's the composition of the five laser instrument. Once again, here you might notice how small are the bandwidth, the size of the bandpass filter starting from 15 up to 35 nanometer. So we have basically 16 UV, 16 violet, 14 blue, 10 yellow green, and eight in the red for a total of 64 fluorescent channels. So extreme flexibility. How the signal is built actually, as you remember, I was showing you that each laser is uh, scattering the cells, the light travels to the corresponding detector and the spectrum is composed by this different fraction of light generated, digitalized by the correspondent detector. And then the software is basically putting together this amount of photons and creating the full spectrum out of 64 fluorescent channels. And this is what you see as an output. 
Yeah, so once again, this is basically the composition of the five laser instrument. What we have done with this five laser instrument, so we were not happy about the three laser, 24 antibodies in one tube. I said, we have a five laser machine, we can do more. So this is quite nice, uh, let's say, as a, we are quite proud about this. It's the first time that we are able to mix 40 antibodies in one tube using, uh, using a flow cytometer. Here you can see the example of the markers. I can share with you the paper if you like. Uh, so these are the markers that we have utilized and the analysis was done in this case is a more multi-parametric way, of course, because we cannot see the overview of the results using conventional scatter plot and histogram, but we have used this TISNE and VISNE plot where you can see by the different type of cells, the level of expression expressed by the color intensity, something like the heat map. For example, out of the monocytes, they are highly expressed the CD14, CD11B, out of the B cells, you can see the CX, CR5, or out of the CD8, positive T cells, we see high expression, for example, of course, of the CD8, CD27. It's a quite nice and of course necessary uh, algorithm and methodology that we need to use when we are going to very high multi-parametric flow cytometry to have a quick overview of the results. And this is done with this FlowSOM uh, software, which we cooperate with, with the company that is producing this software. We have some nice integration to that. So uh, definitely we want to help you also in the post-processing of this really complex data. What else is coming with the spectral flow cytometry? It's another also unique advantages. As you remember, I mentioned before about the possible autofluorescence, uh, which is uh, binded to the cell type. I might think about if you work with some large stem cells, cancer cells or macrophages, we see sometimes some autofluorescence, which is purely depending on the property of the cell membrane on the forward the side scatter complexity of the cells. And here you can see one example of a positive cell spectrum, M cherry positive and unstained. What is quite interesting is that the unstained has comparable spectrum has a quite high background intensity, which we don't want, which we don't expect uh, compared to the single positive. So if we are using this unstained to correct our signal, to apply our, our unmixing, we have quite high background, which results in this error. So you can see that the unstained and the M cherry looks quite similar. So we are not really able to separate the single uh, positive and the single negative population due to the fact that we introduce some error into our photon correction. But when we have such a situation using spectral flow cytometry, you can apply something which is called uh, subtraction autofluorescence subtraction. And this is basically treating your unstained as a, as a second color. So we assign this as an additional color. We tell to the software that there is something to correct in here to the subtract the background. And after autofluorescence extraction, definitely we are getting more uh, corrected results. There is less error. There is a separation of the positive and negative with nice resolution. Uh, which in this situation is quite necessary. You can imagine if you are introducing such a big error in a large panel, you will basically replicate your error across all the 20 or 30 uh, antibodies correction. Yeah, so the user has to evaluate, of course, which is the situation where the background can uh, apply some quite relevant error into the analysis because it's not always necessary to, sub to subtract the autofluorescence, but it's a very nice tool that conventional cytometry is not offering. You might think that this is a really complex technology, but that's not the case. The workflow, it's extremely simple. So the idea is to work like in conventional cytometry, check the instrument settings, decrease the gains only if you have signal off scale, we use something called Cytec assay settings, which we have optimized using our CD4 kit. And as I said, in my experience, practically speaking, I was only adjusting the, uh, the gain when working with some really bright fluorescent protein, because of course with fluorescent protein, we cannot really adjust the titration like you do with your antibodies. 
So we had to decrease slightly the gain of detectors to put it back to scale. Run your reference control. So unstained, single stain control, unmix, which is equivalent to the compensation wizard. It's really similar, yeah? So here you can see your reference control. You operate on raw worksheets. The raw worksheets is the pre-processed worksheets which contains all the events of interest up to 64 fluorescent channel with um, five laser instrument. After unmixing, you get something which is called unmix worksheet, which is basically post-processed. And these are classical FCS file, which contains only, for example, four, five, 10, 20 colors, which you have analyzed. And these are a smaller file, which can be also post-processed using any other flow cytometry file. Okay, so this is the main difference basically of these two type of output. The software is extremely easy. I'm going to have also uh, tomorrow another webinar, which, sorry, not tomorrow, Thursday, another webinar, which is focused on, uh, on discussion about overlapping dyes. Uh, so if you like to attend also this other webinar on Thursday, I will discuss a little bit more the software feature and the operation, but it's extremely uh, intuitive, easy to use, as you can see here from this uh, software interface. These are the laser options uh, from, four, from three to five, and there is also very nice auto sampler, which can be used to operate with uh, 96 well plate. Now we are waiting for a more flexible auto sampler, which can work also with tubes, with 384 well plates, and uh, we can do absolute counting using this technology uh, without reference beads, plus we can do temperature control on the plate. This can be quite convenient for some delicate experiments. If you want to keep your cells refrigerated or heated, you can do so, yeah? So this is the overview of the, of the Cytec Aurora. And basically, as I said, there are quite a lot of nice, interesting, unique features like the number of channel, the size, the sensitivity of detector, the fact that you don't need to exchange any optical filter, you have all the channels available. At the same time, you can basically work with any commercially available dye excited by the lasers on board, volumetric absolute counting, and it's very accessible from really beginner to very experienced user. It uh, can be for everyday use or for very special application. And of course, you don't need really to touch too much the optics, no need to exchanging optical filters, yeah? So now I will want to get some quick question on the Aurora on, you, on the chat box, and then I will briefly describe you also the option of the sorter. So I will give you like a couple of minutes to, to, to text some, some question in the chat box. I can answer some of the questions. And then we can finish this discussion with description of the sorter. So please. Excuse me, would it be okay if I, if I ask you a question like this? Yeah, sure. We are not so many, so it's fine. Not a problem. So uh, you, you said that uh, you in the workflow when you right. describe the workflow uh, that uh, you you acquire the reference spectrum of of with single labeled cells mm -hmm. and uh, do you have uh, some kind of a database of reference dyes that you can uh, just uh, load without uh, acquiring single labeled samples or this is an absolute requirement? Right, that's a very good question. So I, I guess Peter, right? Yes, yes okay. Yes. Hello Peter, so thank you for this question. It's quite, it's quite good practical aspects. Uh, the idea is that we have, if you want, we can even provide you the single FCS file for each of the, we have tested like 120 dyes. Uh, which potentially you can upload in your library and then you can reuse it anytime for your correction. But what we recommend to the user is because each system maybe has slightly different uh, performances, slightly different setup, of course. So we recommend the user to create your own library, which is binded to your own instrument. So the idea is that, for example, the first time you run some panel, you create your own quality single color control. You can store it in the library. 
And then the next time you repeat this experiment, you have a library so you can use your uh, reference control from the library to do the unmixing again, okay? This is basically how it works. You can create a nice library. You can compare even the performances over time. So the idea is that, for example, if you work with some tandem dyes, you want to be sure that that the uh, the the spectrum of the tandem dye looks the same as the one that you have right now, because we had experience with tandem dyes that uh, with degradation the spectrum is totally changing. So we have all the instruments, all the option to get reproducibility in your data. Yes, so the, the answer is yes, you can create a library basically of reference control. Okay, uh, thank you. And just if, I'm, if I understood correctly, you are going to talk about the sorting option next. Yes, okay. yes. So thank you for the question. Anyone else has some other question about the, the spectral technology in general? Yeah, for me, sure. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Naomi Miesner. I'm a junior research assistant uh, at the University of Debrecen, Hungary. Uh, thank you so much for your very nice presentation. These machines are uh, really interesting and the uh, new technologies are also. And I'm really interested in this nice topic and these kind of machines. And I have two questions, mm -hmm. if it is possible. The Please. first one is, uh, what's the minimal volume of the sample and how many cells should we measure for the best results? Okay. Well, for example, if I take the example of the, the unmixing algorithm requires at least 200 positive cells. So this is one example of how the system, it's, it's sensitive enough that if you have just mm -hmm. st starting from 200 positive cells in your gated on your histogram, mm -hmm. that would be enough for the algorithm to work. If you have less, the algorithm will complain a bit because it says that we don't have enough positive photons for the correction. So it's very very powerful algorithm from this point of view of course more positive you have more bright you have better mm. it is as for conventional cytometry the the approach is the same as for the volume i think that we can easily operate at starting from 10 15 microliter if i'm not wrong mm -hmm. it's quite it's quite low and even lower with auto sampler which comes with this, this sample recovery option that that is uh, putting back the unutilized sample Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And the second one that yeah. uh, you mentioned the software of the uh, machine and right. should, should we buy the analyzing software alone or is it included the total price of the machine? With the machine there is, uh, we can discuss about the license. I think one it's included and in this is acquisition and analysis software. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, there are different options. There are users that they like to post-process using FCS Express, Flojo. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that with SciTech Aurora, we can provide also half a year or one year license to test this um, FCS Express because there is, there is a spectral module also into FCS Express. Another story is with multi-parametric analysis. As you remember, I showed this Tisne plot, Visne plot using 40 colors, 40 antibodies. These are separate <coughs> software which are working in the cloud. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry, so we cooperate with this company, OmniSite, which is producing this uh, multi-parametric plot. And uh, we always, of course, inform the client depending by their number of colors that they want to do, which is the recommended way how to process the data. Ah, but this, these are FCS files which can be opened by any flow cytometry software, okay? Wow, very nice. Yeah. Yes, yes, thank you so much. Welcome. Uh, again, yes. Peter, can I have another question? Yes, Peter, please. Uh, uh, Noemi's question uh, just brought up an, another question. Uh, what kind of a sample holder do you have or a sample loader unit do we need? So do we need tubes or 96 well plates or? So, IC? yeah. yeah. So for the manual access, we use the classical fax tube, single tube, fax uh, five milliliter tube. Otherwise here there is 96 well plate. And as I said, we are expecting the loader for uh, with tube rack as well and 384 well plates in the near future. So at the moment, at the very moment, if you buy the instrument today, there is 96 well plate. Uh, and basically this, uh, this uh, syringe probe is going each well, it's mixing. Uh, and this is the thermoelectric cooling, which is keeping the, 
the system cooled or heated depending by the um, depending by your requirements and the instrument can do also absolute counting can apply the sample recovery so it is quite a nice flexibility also in the sampler so, so when i buy the instrument then then this 96 valve plate loader is kind of default and it's not then... default it's not default it depends if you select this uh, in the in the it's like some extra catalog but if if you don't buy the the auto sampler there is the standard uh, manual port for tube standard fax tubes five milliliter yeah and, and when, when you write easy conversion between tubes and plates yes. that then it we means, don't have to call the service so we can at the beginning of the instrument switch from tube to plate without a sampler yes Without a sampler, yes, basically there is a lead, which when you push it in front, you use the auto sampler with plate. When you push it back, you will go back to tube mode. That's basically how it is. This is what I mean with easy conversion between tubes and plates, that in one, in one step, you can basically switch off the auto sampler and go back to the single tube mode, manual mode. And if you switch it on back, you will step back to auto sampler with the 96 volt plate. So this is the meaning of the easy conversion. OK, thank you. OK, welcome. Can I have a question? Please. Can you, can you hear me? OK. Yes, I do. Uh, yes. I am Jode Bacunat. Hello. Uh, Joe Banco, I just uh, hide it behind it. OK, so uh, I would like to know that's how the system handles actually the clogging uh, if uh, the cells are clustered. So it yeah. is required to actually uh, pre- uh, <clears throat> um, sieve the uh, cells so just uh, having single cells definitely mm -hmm. or uh, uh, can it be a problem to clogging the system that's one question the second question is how the tubing is handled so for example if uh, you use propylene iodide or these kind of uh, dyes which might actually mm -hmm. a little bit uh, uh, cross contaminate the tubing and sure. uh, and uh, uh, afterwards it requires to clean up so right. how this system handles these problems yeah. okay so that's also another good question so we are using uh, there are different in the software there are different options for maintenance in between sample we recommend especially with very sticky dye like like a pi or dapi we recommend to run something called clean flow cell there is a nice wizard which will guide you through the clean flow cell and we are going to use some bleach and contrad 50%, which is very nice uh, detergent for the flow cell to remove all the excess of dye which are sticking in the flow cell or in the tubing. It's really quick. It's two steps. It takes a minute, but it's something that we recommend if you are switching, for example, from really bright dye to a totally different panel. Yeah. So we have this wizard in the software, uh, which we, we recommend either for unclogging the instrument because it can happen. So we use the contract also for unclogging the contract 70 uh, or uh, for cleaning simply the flow cell to avoid the cross contamination. And in the end of the day, there is a shutdown procedure which is composed by four steps and the software will tell you exactly what to prepare. So one tube with water, one tube with ethanol, one tube with contract, uh, sorry, not with ethanol, with bleach, with, uh, with water and with contract and uh, uh, to make sure that the day after your system is in perfect shape and clean to be used again. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. Um, I have a question, please. Um, so first of all, like uh, the 96 valve plate is automatized. Thus, yeah. I can kind of leave the machine there. But based on the question of uh, of Jolt, what he asked, like, mm -hmm. what it means like you can't really like read the 96 valve plate if you have like different tires so you kind of need to like add some wells with this cleaning like bleach or something with it or I misunderstand something so you just you, and that you can add some clean wells yes if you want why not I mean you can I, I cannot say that it's it's always necessary because we all also have something which is called seat flush so the seat flush does not require any external fluidics and sometimes it's uh, so it's done with basically this container here is just can be DI water also PBS depends what you choose we can also operate with uh, with milliQ water and if you want to do some very very quick cleaning on the syringe probe 
you can use the seed flush, which doesn't require any, any external fluidics. If you want to do a proper cleaning of the flow cell, then you are asked to add some clean wells or some cleaning tubes if you are operating manually. Yeah, okay. but my question was like about the automatic 96 well plate reading. Yeah. Yeah, I have like uh, five rows with one kind of dia. Right. And due to the, I don't want like kind of contamination between the other, like let's say eight rows of it. Mm -hmm. Need to actually add like kind of cleaning like uh, row between it. Does I understand? Or yeah, you can you can do this. It depends. It depends. I mean, how big is really the cross contamination? Because as I said, you can also choose the option to to have cleaning the seed flush every wells or every five wells. And this basically will clean the seed, will do something called seed flush, so syringe probe flush, using these uh, integrated fluidics which you have here. Okay. If, program, right? if this is enough, yes, and this is automatic. If this is enough, you can use just the seed flush. If you experience some bigger cross contamination, then you can add some clean well in between the two different dyes. It's perfectly possible to configure this automatically when you create your plate map. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Welcome. And I have I have one more question, if it is possible. No problem. Uh, I'm here for you. So cool. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, could you share any information with us that uh, when this machine will be available with sorter function? Because you mentioned that it is not available yeah. now. It it is well. Actually, I wanted to introduce you something. So it's officially available. I don't know when we will start shipping. Maybe mm -hmm. in May, I think. I guess I guess that should be because the let's say the, the presentation was already done. I'm able to share some slide with you very briefly. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I think that we will be able to ship out by May plus minus. But then of course, all this COVID can decrease can delay the logistics. But this is the mm -hmm. official mm -hmm. official news. Yeah. So I maybe I can answer your question with the next few slides. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly when I speak about the the integration of Sorter into this uh, fantastic technology. Okay. If there are no more questions about the spectral. Uh, actually, I, I have one more question. Please. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Anna Boyna from the University of Peach. Hello. And uh, my question is a little bit about your experience with using FMO controls. Um, I see, I, or I saw this panel that you showed with uh, uh, quite a few markers, which also show some kind of continuous expression. Mm -hmm. And I, if I see this correctly, um, you have a, a better resolution of positive or like a better positive negative distinction than conventional flow cytometry. Is this correct? So you have qu quite a good um, resolution. Yeah, the resolution and separation because we collect the all photons and we are using this really small filter that uh, are separating better overlapping dyes. Yes, this is true. And uh, did you, uh, in these experiments, find using those fluorescent minus one controls necessary for some markers, or what is your experience with that? Uh, well, I need to. I didn't develop personally this panel. I can ask if you want about the, what they are used for. What I know, I got the data sets. There was no FMO used for this. Uh, this twenty-three. If you are talking about the twenty-three antibodies in one trial, mm -hmm. I didn't see. Yes. I didn't see the FMO, there was uh, different unstained. Uh, and the idea is that you can use also beads and cells as a control. The important is that the uh, spectrum of the beads, it's comparable to the spectrum of the cells. Uh -huh. so you so don't have some problem. kind of big autofluorescence from the cells you mean? Exactly, that you are matching the spectrum basically, because there is no, uh, you know, in, spectra, in conventional fluorocytometry you don't have you don't have control of this, and sometimes people are mixing beads and cells uh, as a control. So in this case, you have quite nice um, verification that if you see that the beads, the positive beads, as the same spectrum as the positive cells, why not to use the beads as a control? So this can help you also in the separation. About mm -hmm. the FMO, as you know, uh, there is no universal rule. Someone like you use it depends by the complexity of the panel depends by the, the, the type of marker that you are using. For my information, there was no use of the FMO in this 23 um, color panel. Mm -hmm. But I can I can get some more information about uh, this for mm -hmm. you if you, if you like. That would, yes, uh, absolutely. We are very interested in yeah. this. So what, may I ask you what instruments are you using? Like well, how many pan, uh, marker are you at so, this moment? Uh, 
we we just ordered the northern lights so we uh -huh. will be okay. the northern lights in okay. uh, the beginning of next year so it is more of a, thank you <laughs> this is more of a theoretical question at the moment but uh, okay. Okay. We definitely so we'll like to plan ahead yeah, and yeah. Then, of course, this this drastically for twenty four colors. This drastically increases the number of cells or sample or, or antibody usage that you might have if you yeah yeah the yeah. Planners at most. This so is why I guess that I guess we can discuss the suspects then during the training and also before the training we can make some plan together about the your existing antibodies, your plan, how many marker you want to increase. Definitely, we can have a more advanced discussion about that. No Thank you so much. Thank you. And I have one more question, if it's yes. possible. If, it we, is. if we could buy this machine uh, without the sorter function, and if mm -hmm. the sorter type of this machine will be on the market in the next uh, future, uh, could we buy only the sorter part of it, or should we buy a new machine with the sorter function? Yeah, this is also another question that I... I mean, I'm not able to uh, answer specifically. I think it's quite complex. You are not mm -hmm. the first user asking me whether the Aurora can be upgraded to sorter. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe practically it would be possible, but I think it would be very costly and, and, and uh, complicated that I recommend the user to have directly the system ready as a sorter. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I need to check with the technician. It's a bit more like service service question. I don't have the exact answer. Uh, but it's more no than yes, I think, like okay. practically, practically. So okay, okay, it's thank quite, you. It's quite complicated. I don't think it's just about adding the piezoelectric plate. Uh, it's really about changing totally one part of the optics and the uh -huh. fluidics. It's really redesigned uh, uh -huh, type uh -huh. of instrument. Yeah, so it's okay, quite complex. Okay. okay, okay, thank you so much. All right. More questions? Or we can go briefly into the sorter. Okay, so thank you for your question. It was very nice uh, interactive discussion. So let's imagine this. We have spoken now about this fantastic technology. Let's imagine a SciTech Aurora that can actually sort. So this is our newly released uh, instrument. Uh, it's called SciTech Aurora Sorter, Aurora CS. And as you can see, it's also uh, quite quite compact, has a lot of unicity that basically our goal with this instrument is to easily transfer existing panel developed on the Aurora, uh, or in, the, in this case, if you have a three laser on the Northern Lights into your uh, Aurora sorter, because the Aurora sorter can be also three laser, which is having exactly the same optics as the Northern Lights. So we want to help the user basically to transfer the panel design the Aurora into the cell sorting for existing user. We have exactly the same full spectrum technology as the Aurora. And uh, plus we provide performances and expectation that you could have from a, for a high end, high level sorter. So it's not an entry level sorter. It's really a high end sorter built on the previously successfully done uh, spectral technology. What we want to focus here on this instrument, as I said, I have some brief introduction for you is to provide you uh, easy to use. It's a based on QVAT, piezoelectric system. So automatic alignment, wizard for sorting setup, different nozzle size, sorting in tubes or plate. Of course, the biosafety, it's also quite important. We, we provide integrated type class two biosafety cabinet and uh, saving definitely time because uh, you can think about that if you are an existing user of spectral cytometer, you can really in a few steps just run the same panel into the Aurora sorter without all the optimization, changing of the antibody titration, which is quite costly and time consuming. Because all the feature which we have just discussed on the uh, Aurora spectral cytometer, like autofluorescence extraction, one configuration for all applications, so no need to exchange optical filter. You can see the real-time visualization about the full spectrum. Uh, you can apply the same five laser, 60 fold fluorescent channel using this uh, avalanche photodiode. <clears throat> very small detector and very small channel, so the same capability of uh, having very sensitive collection and very highly overlapping dyes. 
And the software, it's also uh, basically the same SpectraFlow software with this integrated module, of course, which is called sort control, which will guide you through the uh, steps of sorting after you have acquired the data. Yeah, so this is our goal, to make your life easy. If you already appreciate this spectral technology, you can switch quickly to Aurora Cell Sorter. And we also have the way to basically go with high purity, single cell sorting, and do some post-processing, like, for example, sequencing or single cell analysis with some other uh, type of technology. So you can set up your pressure level, your nozzle type, in a way that you keep your cells quite viable, that you can perform some post-analysis omics uh, in uh, isolated single cells. Here you can see a comparison that we did on uh, our 40 color panel when running on the optics from the Aurora and the optics from the cell sorter. As you can see, it's quite comparable in terms of signal separation, in terms of spread, uh, and the complexity index. So the complexity index is what is given by our uh, unmixing algorithm. As you remember, the system is putting together several four from one against the other is calculating the similarity and then it's giving you a complexity index. Of course, higher is the number of parameter, higher is the complexity index. But in this case, 56 to 54 complexity index is quite comparable showing that we would expect the same complexity either we are running on the Aurora or on the cell sorter. You can see here another example of comparing the monocytes, Aurora and the cell sorter also here, very, very similar resolution and output, the CD4. So I'm just taking some examples, some extrapolate out of this 40 color panel to show you that we are really ready to transfer straight away the existing panel from the cytometer to the cell sorter. Which are the steps to move from Aurora to the cell sorter? So here you can see example of eight color human PBNCs on the uh, Aurora, so gate on lymphocytes. Uh, markers of interest, and then basically do exactly the same on your on your cell sorter. The difference is that uh, we are able, in fact, to uh, do something which is uh, available now using the sort control module. So select the sort population that you are interested in, select the parameter, whether we have six way of sorting, depending whether you want some purity, uh, enrichment, one way, two ways, you want to sort in plate, in tube. So we have quite nice uh, flexibility, as I already mentioned. And there are the same e wizard, like uh, also for, for setting up the, the proper uh, setting for sorting. So aligning of your sort stream, determine the drop delay and select the sort population. The user has totally, uh, there are two different options whether you want to use our wizard there are wizard for example depending if you're interested in a rich amount of cells or high purity uh, or you can totally create your custom wizard in a, in a way that you can decide the settings for alignment of the sort stream you can decide the setting for the drop delay and for the sort population okay so we have this easy to use wizard for example even beginner in sorting could start working with that quite easily, but for very advanced sorting user, which they want to have full control of all the parameter, we allow the manual setup. Can we sort into plates? The answer is yes. Here you can see also the, uh, the software sort control, which is integrated into spectral flow, the general acquisition analysis software that can allow you to sort in plates. And also here, basically you decide which is the population of sorting, the starting volume, stopping volume. So all the condition, how many plate you want to, how many wells you want to fill up, which is your starting mode, single cell in this case, and the collection device 96 well plate. So it's really, really straightforward, intuitive to, to multiplex your single cell collection in 96 well plate. There are really a lot of nice feature, unique feature out of that. So first of all, of course, it's coming from really unique technology as a spectral cytometry, Aurora spectral cytometry. So it's the only uh, sorter in market which can at this moment run and sort a panel of 40 antibodies in one tube, uh, 
pre-validated. Uh, so it's really easy, as I say, to switch from sort cytometer to sorter. Uh, we can work in high complexity panels and it's really definitely automated, uh, easy to use. So also it's completing, let's say, our, our product line with the existing Northern Lights and Aurora uh, to finally access the uh, full spectrum sorting. Here you can see a little bit more technical features. You can sort from five to 50 milliliter tubes with different also mixing, heating and cooling. There are up to six ways sorting. You can sort into 96 well plate, as I mentioned, up to single cell level. There are different nozzles type depending by the object of interest, starting from 70 up to 130 micron. And you can have this totally automated uh, wizard for sorting or custom uh, setup. It's already validated for integration in biosafety class type two cabinet. As we know that, of course, the uh, sterility and the contamination, it's also important. And as I said, I have this information at this moment for you to share. You are probably the first users which are getting this uh, preliminary information about the sorter. So we have also our website uh, where we are sharing some more, uh, some more information about that. I expect some more info to come in the next few weeks. And uh, I can only recommend you, of course, to ask me or ask Chaba, which is our local, uh, local sales manager for Hungary, and we will be happy really to, to answer more questions, uh, depending by the information we have. So I would like to thank you for your attention and feel free now to ask me any questions as for before. I have one question about the sorting. Uh, uh, so you mentioned after the question of Naomi that uh, <clears throat> the minimal is like 200 cells, which could be like useful to work in the flow cytometry and approximately mm. 10 to 50 microliter. I don't, is it the same for the sorting as well or not? I don't think, right? Am I right? The optic, so wait, let's, let's uh, try to don't uh, misunderstand. So I said that we need 200 positive events for the unmixing. Yeah. Okay. So not 200 cells like to sort. It's, it's a little bit different, maybe just to be sure that we don't misunderstand. So we, our algorithm will ask you, if you say that this is your single positive control, our algorithm will ask you to gate at least 200 positive cells to be able to make the photons correction. Okay. okay, so 200 events, 200 events, let's call it, okay? Because cells maybe is not correct. 200 positive events. Uh, yes, the optic, it's exactly the same. Uh, plus you have the integrated sorting module. So as I said, the same, the same way you work on the Aurora you will, or Northern Lights, you will work on the Aurora cell sorter. Plus you have the sorting capability as I just mentioned now. And uh, you can actually uh, put it in like a cell culture hoods as well. Exactly. Plus two, okay. plus two biosafety okay. cabinet. Yes, we, yeah, yeah. And um, I'm actually not from, uh, not from Hungary. I'm from Sweden. Do you know that? Is it available here as well or not? Uh, I think so. I can, uh, I can basically forward you the, to, to the local representative. If you are located in Sweden, yes, it's not a problem. Yeah. So I, uh, I'm quite sure that, I don't know if SciTech directly is responsible for, for Sweden or there is another distributor. But uh, um, I can probably find your contact, I guess, in the re registration list, or you can send me an email. I will forward it to yeah, the yeah. Thank you so local, much. Thank you. local distributor. Some more questions? Uh, maybe everyone is impressed, so there is no more question. <laughs> okay, so anyways, uh, if there are more questions, I, as I said, uh, we are not disappearing. So we are here for you and we'll be happy to, to receive your questions. Either you can see here my email or you can get in touch with, with Chaba. is also our uh, local representative for, uh, for Hungary. So um, we will be happy to be in touch with you and to answer all, uh, all your questions afterwards. So I want to thank you once again for your attention. It was a really nice uh, interactive session. I hope you have enjoyed.